Hey there, y'all. Got some new vinyl and CDs in the house, including a package that just arrived right before I started filming. We'll go ahead and unbox this and take a look at everything else I got coming right up. Stay where you are. Hey there, y'all. Welcome back to another Tim Talks Christian Rock. Tim Risto here. Thank you so much for joining me today and choosing to make this video part of your day today. It is very much appreciated. Today we're going to talk some of my latest CD and vinyl finds. I've got stuff from a variety of different sources, mainly CDs today, although I do have, I think, about three or four vinyls. Um, and they're from places like, uh, I think I've got a Girder uh, or Boone's order in here eBay purchases, Amazon purchases, and um, Half Price Books finds, as well as one Kickstarter in here as well. So a variety of different sources. And kind of covering the gamut, either from really harder edge kind of stuff, harder rock stuff, to uh, a more mellow things. So kind of both extremes, really. Mainly the rock, harder rock stuff, though. So let's take a look at what I got. But before we do that, thank all of you who have uh, been following my channel, subscribed, um, liked videos, shared, uh, and just been a supporter of my channel so far. So very much appreciated. I just recently hit the 500 subscriber mark. Thank you so much for those of you who have uh, helped me to make that goal. It is very, very much appreciated. It's onward and upward from here. So beginning next year in 2025, going to aim for that 1,000 subscriber mark either by the end of the first quarter or second quarter. I think my goal really is uh, by the end of March, so the end of the first quarter, to hit that thousand subscriber mark see what we can do uh, but lots more content ahead uh, for the rest of this year here in 2024 as well as uh, moving into 2025 so keep an eye on my channel for that if you haven't already please like this video subscribe to my channel hit that bell notification button so you can be kept up to date on whenever a new video drops so without further ado let's check out what i got we might as well start with the good stuff first, right? So let's start with the package that just got dropped here at my front door a few short minutes ago before I started taping uh, and see what this is. It is from Galaxy 21 Music, which means this is from the Kickstarter campaign uh, that the choir did for their Free Flying Soul album on vinyl. So let's go ahead and unbox this and check it out. I'm actually very excited about this one. See it, there's album cover art peeking out. Here it is. Looks like the plastic tore a little bit here, perhaps in shipping. Uh, oh, I know what it was. This has been autographed by the band. I forgot about that, so they had to tear it to autograph. But here it is, the choir free flying soul which originally had never been released on vinyl. This is from 1996, originally. I've got the original CD of this, but when they did the Kickstarter for this, for this vinyl edition, I had to, had to have it. And there's the uh, autographs of the band members there in the corner. Also here in the package is this rather cool little mini poster, which I didn't realize Maybe I didn't read the Kickstarter close enough, but I didn't realize this was part of it. Maybe it was a little extra bonus or something, but that's kind of cool. Choir Free Flying Soul. A uh, little mini poster. Very cool. Go ahead and tear open the rest of the plastic here on the vinyl. I always thought this was pretty cool. Cool cover art. In the back, and it is a gatefold. Cool. Mainly has the thank you to the falling free flying souls here in the credits. Assume these are maybe some people who were higher up the chain on the uh, Kickstarter campaign. It's a single vinyl release. And there's a sleeve with lyrics and credits on this side, lyrics on this side, and the vinyl itself. Oh, yeah, look at that. Side one, forgot what they called this particular mix. They had different uh, uh, names for the different uh, 
you know, splatter style vinyl. Uh, this was a splatter style that was, I don't know, free flying soul mix or something like that. I don't remember what they called each of the ones, but they had three or four, I think, different types or styles of vinyl, uh, colored, colored vinyl styles. Uh, and this is the one that appealed to me the most. Uh, looks really, really good. Of course, since I'm just opening this, I have not listened to it, but I will be uh, dropping this on the turntable tonight and probably doing a full review of the vinyl as well coming up. So something to look forward to. But there you have it, Free Flying Soul from the choir. It's actually a really good album. Opening track, Salamander, just remains one of my favorite all-time choir songs. I really love that one. Let's go ahead and move on to CDs. I've got two more vinyls left, but I'm going to leave those to the end because those are a little more mellow stuff. I figure more of the rock and stuff here is going to appeal to, to most of you guys. So we'll move on to CDs. Place an order with Amazon.com here recently. I'm trying to start getting caught up with some of the uh, more recent albums that I haven't got or purchased on physical media. may have listened to them digitally, but have not purchase physical media so i'm trying to get caught up because there's been a lot of good albums come out this year especially the latter half of the year that i just haven't owned yet so got some good prices on them on amazon so picking those up uh, uh on cd in particular uh first up though was striper gde i'll say it just so i don't get flagged or offend anybody um their 2018 album which is one of their many albums in their recent string of hits over the last 10 years or so, 10, 12 years, whatever it's been. Um, that I actually have this one on vinyl. If you hear if you hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because the wash machine's going here. And unfortunately, I have to tape during this time while the wash is gone. So maybe a little noise in the background. Apologize for that, guys. But uh, anyway, this one is a great album that I have on vinyl, the turquoise vinyl. But I actually just had never picked up the CD of this. Saw it on Amazon for a really good, good price, and thought I need to need to pick that up. So, this is just kind of filling in the gaps a little bit in my discography. I love love this this album. Of course, take it to the cross, the first track, which was a little uh, controversial, I guess, because it's kind of this rapid fire uh, style of vocals and style of music that didn't necessarily appeal to everybody. Uh, a little bit of a stretch from stripers past sound and style but i really i really liked it um sorry is a great one gde is a great one the valley um anyway those are some of my favorites right there but great great album cover art's pretty uh controversial of course as as stripers album arts often often can be but uh but still pretty cool too so i like this album it's a good one all right, next up is another Amazon order and another Striper album. This year's release, To Hell with the Amps. This is their unplugged, stripped-down acoustic album, whatever you want to call it. I think unplugged would be appropriate since it's To Hell with the Amps. Um, which, you know, back in the day, a lot of, a lot of bands used to do these unplugged, stripped-down albums. It doesn't happen as much anymore where they do these acoustic versions of their electric or rock style songs and uh you know this one i was a little skeptical of when i heard about it wasn't terribly interested in picking it up right away but then i listened to the uh, to some samples and um you know the digital streaming version of this really started to fall in love with it and uh so i thought i need to pick pick that up it was a very simple release it's a little digipack release and fold out um, very simple there's a little fo uh, fold out sheet lyric sheet photo sheet uh, in that side and the CDs over here. Uh, I'm not going to show a lot about this simply because I'm about to do a review of this and that'll be coming out here shortly. In fact, by the time you watch this video, it, uh, it won't be far behind. So check, check that. Maybe I can put a link in the description down below uh, if you're interested in following the full review of this album. But uh, I will say in short, it's very good. It's uh, stripped down versions of You Know What to Do, Soldiers Under Command, No More Hell to Pay, Make You Mine, Loud and Clear, Lady, Honestly, Calling on You, Version of Amazing Grace, Always There for You and All for One. And uh, I, I like it. I like the sound of this and, uh, and where they record it and everything is actually really cool. So anyway, head on over to my full review of To Hell with the Amps. It'll be my album of the week. Uh, next week at the time of this recording. So be sure and check that out. Good album. 
All right, next up is an eBay purchase that I made not too long ago. This is an old classic album from 1988 on Pure Metal Records. And that album is White Cross's Hammer and Nail from 1988. This is one of those missing albums from my White Cross collection that I was trying to fill in. But this one seemed to always uh, garner a rather high price on, on eBay. And I think Discogs. I think I looked there a couple times too. But, uh, but then this copy appeared at a very reasonable cost uh, a couple weeks ago. So I snapped it up. And uh, I'm glad I did. It's in very, very good good condition and uh, again this was a missing missing album for me in their discography uh, it's, it's the original again pure metal release so it's very simple just got the lyrics and kind of a, a folded uh, insert nothing too too special but glad to uh, glad to have it uh, kind of simple but nice looking disc printing um, I believe this was their second album. Yeah, 1988. Their first one, White Cross, self-titled uh, from 1987, is one I showed not too long ago, I think in my previous uh, Vinyl and CDs finds video. Uh, I found the vinyl of uh, White Cross's debut album uh, in a half-price bookstore. So finding this uh, follow-up one on CD uh, for a very good cost was... Uh, was a pleasant surprise as well. So I think I've still got a few more to collect uh, in my White Cross collection. Um, maybe next year I'll do a video about about the White Cross uh, albums that I've got and just kind of look at their discography as well. But happy to have Hammer and Nail added to the collection. All right, then we switch over to, I think this was Boone's Overstock. I sometimes forget whether I order from Boone's or Gerda. I think this was Boone's. I've tended to do more ordering from them here in recent months, but um, the last two CDs that I was missing from this band's discography, I finally put into my collection. That's Sacred Warrior, uh, Wicked Generation Generation from 1990. Um, I have this on vinyl, but I did not have this remastered CD, so I went ahead and picked that up. Great album, a little darker themed album because of the uh, themes of, uh, of abuse, child abuse that this talks about, but um, really a good, good album. So again, I had this on vinyl, but didn't have the CD, so I picked that up. And then also their fourth and last album with this particular lineup from 1991, Obsessions by Sacred Warrior. Again, this is one I picked up on vinyl, I think earlier this year or last year, whichever it was. But had not picked up these uh, the Metal Icon series of uh, of CDs. I got the other two albums on on CD. Uh, Master's Command is it and uh, Rebellion? I think is the first is the first one. Um, so I got those two on vinyl, but I never uh, and see uh, or on CD I should say and didn't uh, hadn't gotten these on CD yet. Um, the only one I don't have on vinyl then is Master's Command, which commands quite a high price uh, on eBay or Discog, so I hope they'll re-release that on vinyl someday. Maybe we can lower those costs a little bit and get access to a nice vinyl copy of that, since that's arguably their most popular popular album. But anyway, these dropped. They weren't that expensive. I think these were originally $16.97 or $16.99, and they dropped to $14.97 for a while, and then they actually dropped a dollar more to $13.97, and that's when I decided to go ahead and pick these up. So I think I got them at about the cheapest price that I could for brand new copies of those two CDs. So I'm happy to have them in the collection as well. Next up is a band near and dear to my heart here in uh, Texas, and that's One Bad Pig. These were a couple of albums, their older albums. This is actually their demo album, A Christian Band, uh, from 1986. And uh, this, this is one of these CDs that has, I think, again, I think this was Boone's Overstock, that they've had for a while on like $5 or $3.96 3 or something like that. It was very cheap, $5 or under $5. And I've looked at that price for a while going, I need to pick that up. I need to pick that up to finish out my One Bad Pig uh, collection and they also had ice cream Sunday as well for I think similar price either 396 or or five bucks and this one is from 1991 so again these were a couple that I was 
missing from my one bad pig collection. And again, they were at such good prices. Had them in my cart several times before and just had never uh, followed through with, with buying them. And I thought, you know, at those prices, I need to pick them up before they're, before they're all gone because these are original editions, you know, the original labels. These aren't remastered or reissues or anything like that. So I thought I need to need to grab them while I can. I think I'm only missing one, one of the one bad pig albums yet. But uh, again, nice to pick those up. They're punk rock, uh, rock punk rock band in uh, Austin, Texas area that's uh, been around for a long time. I think they still play a few festivals here and there. Not sure, but uh, anyway, those are two of their earliest albums that I needed to add to the collection. And again, just like these others, happy to finally add them to the collection at a very reasonable price all right and to wrap up the cds let's go to angelica's debut album from 1989 part of the cd remastered reissue legends of rock series here i actually have the original uh, release cd of this that i've had for many years never bothered to pick this uh, remastered edition up because i thought i'm good with the uh, original in fact i invested quite a bit in the vinyl uh reissue of this album thought okay i'm really good but then when this you know dropped in price i think like i said i think it was 7.99 or something i thought okay i'll get the remastered one too might as well uh and this is just a great album definitely a favorite uh album of mine in christian rock history period just a great album this one has rob rock on vocals rob rock does amazing amazing stuff i need to really get into uh his solo stuff um he's just he's just great but anyway Went ahead and picked this up. You can check it out again. I think it's at Boone's. See if they still have it for sale. If you don't have that remastered edition of that, I'd recommend picking it up. Also, I'd pick this up over at Rocks Records. I think I may have shown this in another video, but uh, Angelica, the Demo Sessions CD. The last um, disc that I didn't have from Ande Angelica in my CD collection. So I've completed their discography now, at least on CD. Uh, and I'm very happy with that. All right, that's it for the CDs. Last but not least, let's cover a couple quick vinyls here. This was a half price books purchase. Uh, so You Want to Go Back to Egypt by Keith Green. This is probably my second favorite Keith Green album. Not, you know, I'm not huge into a lot of this very mellow, praise and worshipy style of uh, what was back then, this was from 1980, known as contemporary Christian music. Um, I'm much more into the Christian rock. But Keith Green was a person that I listened to early on when I got into Christian music. I discovered him through this album that I already owned, uh, To Him Who Has Ears to Hear, which to me is my favorite Keith Green album. I mean, this is one where I love every track on it. Um, great, you know, uh, piano player, keyboardist, uh, just a phenomenal talent without a doubt. And so this is my favorite album. But I've seen this one here, so you want to go back to Egypt. It's, I think it's his second or third album. Uh, I've seen this one so many times in half-price bookstores in the clearance section, you know, for either a dollar or two dollars. I've passed it up a number of times. Saw it again here the other week and decided, uh, you know what, I should finally just pick it up, so I've got a copy. Bad thing is, it's not a very good copy. This was two bucks. Um, I've passed up much better-looking copies in the past, so... Probably if I find this one again down the road, which I have a feeling I will, uh, you know, I'll pick up a better copy then. But I just decided, you know, I keep finding it. I'll just pick it up and I happen to be in the uh, in the bin, so I went ahead and got it. But uh, this is probably my second favorite one. I do like I do like the style on this album as well. I'd also previously shown uh, that I picked up this one too by Keith Green, "Songs for the Shepherd." Definitely a very very uh, praise and worshipy album. It's it's pretty much just him doing hymns. Uh, you know, his renditions of hymns or, uh, or at least praise and worship style songs. I think many of these are hymns, but uh, not my favorite, you know, album. But again, I find it really inexpensive. I'll probably ultimately end up collecting my way through his discography just because I keep finding them all the time. Uh, and, you know, he is an amazing, or was an amazing talent that uh, died way too soon in his career. It'd be interesting to see what he'd be doing today. Uh, if he were still around but uh, anyway so you want to go back to egypt cool cool album okay and last but not least is imperial stand by the power 
Once again, I'm not a huge Imperials fan. The only other album of theirs that I own right now is uh, Let the Wind Blow, which I like that album because of the title track song. That was one I happened to hear on the radio back in the day when I was younger, and that one always kind of appealed to me. Um, I, I recognize their importance in Christian music history. Uh, I've never been a huge fan, but again, kind of like with Keith Green, I keep coming across these albums whenever I'm digging through Clarence Vinyl sections at Half Price Books. In fact, when I got this one, there were a bunch of other Imperials albums there too, none of which really appealed to me. Um, but this one I remember seeing because this was from the 80s too. I think this was uh, 82. So I remember seeing this album cover a lot in Christian bookstores back in the day. Uh, I thought, again, for a buck, I think it was a buck or two bucks, I thought I'd go ahead and pick it up, um, give it a listen, see what I think. I think it probably has a little more of a contemporary vibe to it, but I'm not sure. But anyway, Imperials stand by the power, very gospel oriented, uh, you know, vocal vocal group that's been around for a long time. In fact, I think they just released uh, a new album, actually, uh, not too long ago or some, sometime here this year, within the last few months or so. So anyway, Imperials stand by the power from 1982. All right, y'all, there you go. Those are my latest vinyl and CD finds. Like I said, mainly CD finds, but uh, there was some good stuff in there, huh? Any favorites of yours? Feel free and let me know in the comments below. Hey, go out and listen to some great Christian rock today. Make it some, uh, how about some choir, Free Flying Soul. That is a great album and probably my choice pick of the day today. Anyway, go out and listen to some great Christian rock. And above all else, remember, stay in God's word. Blessings, y'all. Have a great one. See you next time.